Some characters in Magic the Gathering gain their popularity simply because they're seen on cards proven as staples in multiple formats, from standard to modern to even legacy. In a sense, some of these characters would have fallen into obscurity if not for the power of their cards, which keeps them in the minds of players and encourages them to learn more about that character's story. Thus is the case of a fan favorite, the popular Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Thanks to her heroic deeds, unwavering devotion, and uncorruptible resolve, not to mention her insane ability to slow down the spells of your opponent's early game, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, is getting a secret layer edition all for herself. Let's explore what makes this character so memorable to players, how her struggles have turned into true fandom in the MTG community. This is Thalia, Beyond the Hell Vault. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sybin bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today we're talking about everyone's favorite Cathar, Thalia, who leads holy forces on the dark, troubling plane of Innistrad. As I said in the intro, Thalia is getting some special treatment with Secret Lair, including four unique copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraven, each with new art and flavor text that encompasses her entire story. Her card is so iconic and well utilized that MTG Arena is adding it to their new New expanded historic format, with this bundle of Thalia Beyond the Hell Vault meant to promote her addition. So, with some new amazing artwork by Johannes Voss and Magli Villenevi, and her addition to the MTG digital scene, I can think of no better time to cover the story of Thalia. To understand the tale of Thalia, you must first learn about her home plane of Innistrad. As Thalia is a mortal, non-planeswalking character, her experiences, drives, and development all happen within the context of Innistrad. Innistrad is personally one of my favorite planes in all of MTG. It's a macabre world full of strange and terrible beasties. It mirrors a horror film set in a medieval era, a world in which vampires, werewolves, zombies, and demons are all real forces trying to upend the everyday citizens on Innistrad. On no other world is there such a noticeable line between light and dark than Innistrad. You have the forces of the Holy Church, priests, angels, monster hunters, versus the aspects that prey on the innocent, storybook monsters, mad scientists, and cultists. Innistrad is a world trying to strike a balance between these two forces, so that all could live without one side pushing the other to oblivion. But balance is hard and sometimes impossible to achieve, and when the dark proves too foreboding, the people look towards their champions of light for guidance, champions like Thalia, the Guardian of Thraven. Before her most famous role, Thalia was nothing more than a mere student in the Gavini, the Church of Avicen, which stands as the major religion on the plane. The people's faith in this archangel, Avicen, fuels the holy warriors in their battle against the night. As the people pray to Avicen, the church listens, protecting them with legions of angels and warrior knights known as Cathars. Thalia would soon join the ranks of the Cathar, proving herself a true devoted follower of the church as well as a skilled warrior. She had gone on countless vampire hunts before donning the mantle of Cathar, fighting with a mix of martial prowess and holy spells that was pretty inspiring to behold. With her new rank, a young Thalia was sent to Thraben, the seat of the church, to begin her stewardship. While in Thraben, Thalia stood out from the other Cathars for her kindness and compassion. The warrior's life bred hard souls and even harder hearts, despite fighting for a holy purpose. Thalia, on the other hand, always kept the well-being of the people as her highest priority. She did serve the Church of Avicen, but she saw that duty as an extension of serving the people. We fight not for Avicen, but for her ideals, not for the church, but for its people. This determination to the ideals of the church put her in the spotlight of the Guardian of Thraben, the leader of the Cathars and Inquisitors of the city, Lothar, who went on to mentor the young Thalia. The greatest thing Lothar managed to pass down to Thalia was knowledge, secrets kept from the public made hidden by the church in some vain excuse to keep the citizens safe in blissful ignorance. Lothar kept watch over a relic, an oddity of Thraben, a monolith known simply as the Hell Vault. Lothar and the church just never mentioned that this Hell Vault was in fact a prison, locking away countless demons and devils, but also their beloved Avicen. 
Lothar, as guardian of Thraben, was tasked with guarding this Hell Vault with his very life if need be, and it would go on to play a pivotal role in Thalia's story. The Hell Vault is not a natural thing, far from it. The vampire planeswalker, Soren Markov, the Lord of Innistrad, crafted the Hell Vault by means of unknown magic, shaping fragments of Innistrad's silver moon meant to trap evil spirits. Despite being a vampire, Soren was a pragmatic leader, realizing his world must strike a balance between the forces of good and evil. At the time of the Hellvolt's creation, vampire armies were overpowering the mortal citizens while demons and werewolves ran rampant. If things were to continue down this path, humanity would fall, and without people to feed these beasts bloodlust, the vampires and others would go extinct as well. Innistrad would die. So at that time, Soren created the two elements needed to form the church, the Hellvolt and Avicen herself. Yes, Avicen is nothing more than a construct of a powerful vampire planeswalker. Lothar told Thalia of a tale few had ever heard, an old battle Avicen had with a demon lord, Gresselbrand, one that pushed the church and holy magic to its very limit. As Avicen took advantage in the fight, Gristlebrand was almost pulled into the Hell Vault, but at the last moment managed to spear the angel through the chest and drag her in as well. In a blinding moment, Innistrad lost their guardian angel, the symbol of their order and the source of all of their holy magic. There are other angels on Innistrad, but they turn to Avicen for guidance, and Avicen's magic is what powered the priest's spells and protected entire cities with angelic runes. Thalia and the others could feel it, but never wanted to believe it. She and the others could feel the prayers of Avicen beginning to wane. Her disappearance was now impossible to ignore. Thalia finally discovered the truth of their declining war against the Shadow. Avicen's absence wasn't only felt by the priests and the Lunark, the leader of the Church of Avicen, who at the time was named Micaeus. No, the dark forces gathered, testing the city's defenses. It was only a matter of time before the sun set on Thraben. The fall would come at the hands of the necromatic siblings Gissa and Jeroff. Gissa is a famed traditional necromancer, using black mana to resurrect countless corpses. Her twin brother Jeroff was a stitcher, a scientist who used spells and alchemy to create abominations known as scabs, which were much stronger than traditional zombies but of course took longer to create. Together the siblings dared one another to take Thraven to prove who made the better undead, a contest which would prove to be too much for the weakened defenses of Avicen's followers. During the Siege of Thraben, those on the front lines included Lothar, Thalia, and Odric, the commander of the church's cavalry. Another important figure involved was the planeswalker Liliana Vess, who was using this war brought on by Gissa and Jeroff for her own advantage. Liliana was after a prize of her own, the Hell Vault, or more specifically that which it imprisoned, the Demon Lord Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand was one of the masters over Liliana's soul, which she had traded away in a contract in exchange for eternal youth and enhanced necromatic powers. Now Liliana looked to regain her soul and renege on this deal by killing all those she made a pact with. Yet with the Hellvolt being constructed of holy silver and blessed to repel black mana, Liliana couldn't do anything to the obelisk. She needed someone to release the demon lord for her, and she found that pawn in Thalia. While the fighting against the zombie hordes continued, Dahlia's mentor, Lothar, fell. Quote, As our numbers dwindled, the ranks of the dead grow ever stronger. End quote. Thalia took on the mantle mid-battle as the new guardian of Thraben, a title that would be tested sooner than she ever imagined. Liliana Vess appeared after killing the Lunark of the church and raising him as a zombie, proving that the holy warriors had no more power. Thalia was given an ultimatum, smash this rock, the Hell Vault, or watch as Liliana squeezed the life from her men and raised them as mindless undead. Though she made a solemn vow to protect this Hell Vault, one that became even more serious as the new guardian of Thraben, she remembered back to her ideals, to protect the people of the church and not just the church itself. The Hell Vault was a relic of the church, but real lives hung in the balance. To Thalia, it wasn't really a choice, as she turned and destroyed the Hell Vault. 
As anticipated, hordes of demons captured over generations exploded forth, with Gristlebrand the biggest amongst them. As a side note, Innistrad was spared of Gristlebrand's evil as Liliana of all people murdered him to end her contract before planes walking away. While the breaking of the Hellvolt let loose a torrent of darkness on Innistrad, it also restored its dwindling light. The Archangel Avacyn was freed as well, healed from her wounds and ready to bring back the dawn. Witness to this event, the release of pure evil alongside their angel, Thalia said, quote, Avacyn emerged from the broken Hellvolt, but her freedom came at a cost. Him. End quote. With Avacyn's resurgence, holy priests and sacred markings had their powers renewed. Cathars fought with inspiration and flights of angels regained their sense of purpose. With Avacyn's aid, the zombies were pushed back and Thraben was saved. Thalia was recognized by the new Lunark, who was voted into power after Micaeus' death, as a crucial commander in the Church of Avacyn, given one of the highest ranks in their order. With Avacyn restored, Innistrad seemed to be entering a golden age. The Cathars, with Thalia leading them, seemed stronger than ever, steep in community and charity work as the vanquishing of evil seemed pretty much handled by the flights of angels. Yet something insidious was coming for Innistrad, something like no one has ever seen before, something truly out of this world. This new threat goes all the way back to an ancient grudge between Soren and Nahiri, a planeswalker pupil of his. Their fight and this massive journey they embarked on together is a massive video in its own right, and really goes over the history of Innistrad as a plane. Maybe something I'll do in the future, but we'll keep this pretty confined to Thalia. Still, Nahiri was a massive threat to Innistrad, so much so that Avacyn and Soren even fought her at one point, also trapping her within the Hell Vault. With that broken, Nahiri was now free to plot a revenge, one that would push the church, Thalia, and the plane to its breaking point. Thalia was enjoying herself under the service of Avacyn, but as time went on, the sun felt like it was finally fading on this golden age. As Avacyn was a created construct, she wasn't nearly as perfect as she appeared. There were flaws in her programming, so to speak. In these flaws, which included a corruptible worldview, Nahiri found a means to strike back against Soren. Nahiri manipulated the ley lines of Innistrad's mana and essentially possessed the mind of the Archangel, fueling her with fury and rage. Avacyn saw normal people as disgusting vermin, blights on the land she looked to protect. Avacyn was driven mad. Now Thalia bore witness to flights of angels attacking the very people they were meant to represent and protect. The Church of Avacyn had fallen. In the early days of the Angel's Madness, Thalia was busy attempting to guide the Lunark down a better path, to not blindly follow an Angel who now fights against her very tenants. The Lunark would hear nothing of it, but his leadership was soon dealt with as he was assassinated by another group looking to corrupt the Church, the Skirtsdag. The Skurzdag are a cultist group of demon worshippers who formerly praised the demon lord Gristlebrand, but after his death looked for a new dark lord to summon. Knowing the church were at the heart of the demon's banishment, they disguised themselves as members of Avacyn's flock and infiltrated the church, killing prominent members and filling those vacant positions. Thalia had fought back against the Skurzdag all her career, yet even she was powerless to stop their internal invasion. With the cult permanently etched into the body of the church, and their savior turned against them in a fiery retribution, Thalia made the difficult decision to leave her order, to abandon the church of Avacyn. Thalia didn't make this choice alone. Others in the church left as well once it was painfully obvious that the cult had taken hold. Odric is another big name who was so devoted to the church, he literally broke down in tears at the forced betrayal. But none would fault him or the other rebels, for they were fighting for justice, for the people, for Innistrad. Of course, Innistrad would face more dangers than just a few pissed off angels. In fact, Avacyn was dealt with by Soren, her creator, who literally unmade her. But she wasn't the main problem. That which caused her corruption was still coming. The Eldrazi Titan? Emrakul, the Titan of Madness, was summoned by Nahiri to lay waste to Innistrad. 
The power of Emrakul cursed the plane of Innistrad and its people, worse than any demon ever could. The people's minds were twisted and fanatic cults began to form everywhere. The humans, vampires, werewolves all found themselves sprouting Lovecraftian tentacles as the corruption of Emrakul infested their very being. Thalia went from fighting a war against the zombies to fighting an enemy completely foreign to her, a force made up of maddened people lost to darkness and unrecognizable. Thalia was used to fighting the forces of evil, those she understood, but this? This was something different and truly horrifying. To fight this new threat, with the church already fallen, Thalia too needed to try something different. Enter in the one that would sway the battle back to the light, the Geist of St. Traft. St. Traft is a major figure in the lore of Innistrad. He was one of the first Cathars who wielded holy magic and worked with the angels to defend the citizenry. He was a superb monster hunter and vampire slayer, so much so that the forces of darkness looked to end his personal war against them. St. Traft lived long before the days of Thalia and the battle against the Aldrazi, but his relationship with Innistrad and the faith of this world was so strong that he didn't enter the blessed sleep when he was finally killed by the demon Withengar. Rather, Traft came back as a geist, a ghost, or spirit, and continued his holy campaign against evil. As a geist, Traft was limited in his efforts, but his skill was so renowned and purpose so pure that where this geist went, a holy angel was never far behind, aiding the ghostly champion in battle to this very day. Quote, The call to the blessed sleep is not so strong as the call to protect those in need. End quote. But how does the ghost of a long-dead warrior help Thalia against the Eldrazi? As Traft had done in the past, the Geist looked to possess the body of a new vessel, a new champion to carry on his cause, so that he may fight through that individual. As fate would have it, the Geist and Thalia found each other at the fall of the Church of Avacyn. The Skurstag pretenders tried to limit and crush Thalia and her rebels, and attacked the images that reminded people of the good Saint Traft. But the people needed someone on their side, thus saw the founding of the Order of St. Traft. With Avacyn corrupted and dead and other major angels lost to madness, faith was now placed in the good Geist. St. Traft in turn entered the body of Thalia, not as an invading force who danced her body like a puppet, but as a friendly reminder of the good that can always come from serving others. The Geist provided Thalia with securities against Emrakul and the Eldrazi, not only enhancing her martial skills, but also increasing the power of holy spells and providing a mental barrier from the corrupting whispers of Emrakul that drove normal people mad. Thalia was the first of this new order's knights, those who would use benevolent Geist to fight off evil, rather than the traditional way of relying on their prayers to Avacyn. Soon the Order of St. Traft saw this as a general practice. The battlefields were being won, cultists pushed back by the combined strength of warriors both of present and past, with Thalia and St. Traft leading that charge. Their final battle was at the place that started Thalia's journey so many years ago, the holy seat of the Church of Avacyn, Thraben, as Eldrazi corrupted forces charged and pushed through initial defenses. Thalia, with her new Order of St. Traft, in one decisive battle, pushed back both the Eldrazi as well as ended the corrupted Lunar Council, exposing and expelling the cultists who infiltrated it. Emrakul herself would be trapped within Innistrad's Silver Moon by the Gatewatch, but the people and their faith was restored by Thalia. Their triumph was solidified with the defeat of the fused Eldrazi monstrosity, Brisella the corrupted combination of the once righteous archangels Bruna and Gisela. Thalia and St. Traft witnessed as the only remaining sane archangel, Sigarda, fought in vain against her lost sisters. Thalia wouldn't let the final bastion of their faith fall. In her journey to Thraben, she came across the discarded spear of Avacyn, a symbol of the church itself, but it was too massive and heavy for a mortal to wield alone. Luckily, Thalia wasn't alone, and would never be alone again. The geist inside her whispered out support for Thalia. The spear was certainly too much for one on their own, but working together they could hurl it to the heavens. As it looked like Sigarda would be absorbed by this evil mass joining her sisters, Thalia and St. Traft worked the spear deep into the vibrant flesh of the angels, freeing Sigarda and ending the madness that had corrupted the church. 
Bruna and Gisela died that day, but Sigarda lifted Thalia and joined this new order, cementing this new order's status as the successor to the Church of Avacyn. Quote, the uncorrupted rallied under Thalia's leadership and Sigarda's banner. End quote. This is where we left Thalia and Innistrad. With Avacyn dead, her magic waning, and the church around her shattered by corruption, Thalia and the Order of St. Trath stand as the last remaining force for good on the plain. Their archangel is now the last remaining of her kind, Sigarda, who commands the final flight of uncorrupted angels on Innistrad. The Cathars and priests of this order picked up a new trick in being possessed by benevolent geists to give them the power they once got from their faith in Avacyn, as Innistrad is still still dark with forces like vampires, demons, and werewolves who constantly plague the innocent, the Order of St. Traft and Thalia's leadership is crucial for the future of Innistrad. I know Innistrad is an interesting topic for a lot of players, so while we got a glimpse into this plane with Thalia's story, I want to know what you guys want me to cover next. Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you support the channel by leaving it a like, subscribing, and ticking that notification bell so you never miss out on a new video. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!